Welcome back to Something in the Wilderness. My name's Steve, and today we're going back almost exactly 10 years. Some people have asked me how I select which songs to cover on here, and the truth is there's a lot of reasons. Sometimes it's based on a suggestion, sometimes it's a lyric that strikes me, sometimes it's the season, a feeling or a tending toward a particular era or track. In today's case, it is the season, and some particular lyrics that seem fitting for right now. I also try to mix in some lesser known tracks to balance out the fan favorites here and there, so today it'll be a song that probably only the more committed fans know. The People and Things album came out during a time when buying on iTunes was one of the most common ways to get your music. So it makes perfect sense that I bought this album on iTunes almost exactly 10 years ago, and then I burned it on CD. So I've always listened to all 15 songs as one album, never really giving much thought to the fact that the last four tracks were actually considered bonus tracks and not officially a part of the album. The song I'm discussing today was one of those bonus tracks attached to the People and Things album, but only if you bought it on iTunes. Not to be confused with a different set of bonus tracks that you would only get if you had bought the CD at Best Buy. So today's song wasn't officially a part of the album, but it really didn't have an official home either. It was just one of the ballads in that small collection. The song is called 10 Days Gone. It's by Jack's Mannequin, and it was a bonus track on the iTunes version of People and Things, released on October 4th, 2011. If you look this one up on Spotify, it is listed with the People and Things Deluxe Edition there, but that version only includes three of the bonus tracks that I mentioned. For some reason, the fourth one is listed separately on Spotify, completely on its own. But I'll talk about that song another time. I have to admit, listening to the set of songs toward the end of the album, including the iTunes bonus tracks, it gets a little tiring. Here's what I've noticed about these songs. If I pull up one of these individual songs, including 10 Days Gone, individually, I enjoy it. But included in this whole set of eight ballads in a row toward the end of the album, it's a lot of slow ballads. I rarely ever listened all the way through to the end of this set of 15 songs. And since I'm usually a full album guy, it's really hard for me to skip around. Now in the streaming era, it's a little different. I just put my Andrew mix on shuffle, and these songs just randomly show up. And it feels a little different to listen to 10 Days Gone this way. I wish I knew more about the personnel behind this song, but I just can't find much information out there about it. I'm pretty sure that Andrew wrote it, although there were a few songs on the album with co-writers. I am sure of one thing, though. Steve Ferrone played drums on the track, and this is significant because Steve was best known for drumming for Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers for the last 23 years of Tom Petty's life. And in fact, Steve's first album with Tom Petty was Wildflowers, which Andrew has stated is one of his favorite albums of all time. So I imagine this was probably one of those starstruck moments for Andrew, when he was able to work with someone who played on Wildflowers. Steve Ferrone has a pretty impressive resume overall, though, also playing on albums by Duran Duran, Eric Clapton, Rick James, Paul Simon, and George Harrison, just to name a few. The producers on the People and Things album were Rob Cavallo and Jim Scott, and Jim Wirt had some additional producer credit, too, so it's really hard to know who was involved in this particular track, since it isn't listed in the liner notes. But if you know where to find this information, please shoot me a message, because I dig pretty deep sometimes to find this information, but I can't always find the answer. I'm also unsure of what all the instruments are included here, but they do have some unique sounds going on. A bit more on that later. So initially when I went searching for this song online, I couldn't find a single record of it being played any time by Jack's Mannequin, or live since. But as I was searching through articles from over the years, I did come across an interesting one. The OC Weekly Concert Review from February 2010, a full year and a half before People and Things was even released. This concert was a last-minute show that Jack's mannequin decided to play at the Viper Room that day. In fact, apparently their publicist didn't even know it was happening until Andrew mentioned it in the OC Weekly interview that afternoon. They took the stage at 10.15 that night, and Andrew started the show with this line, Welcome to band practice. According to the review, Bobby was having technical issues with his amp, so Andrew veered off the set list to play 10 Days Gone. I assume it was just him and the piano on that one, but that wasn't specified. Now, the song wouldn't be released for another 18 months, so it's safe to say that no one knew the song at the time when he played it. The article was a cool little time capsule, though, because the way the writer describes the song, even quoting lyrics from it, but he states he never did find out the name of it from Andrew, and it wasn't listed on the official set list afterward either. Unfortunately, this is the only evidence of any time that 10 Days Gone has been performed live. To me, this song does have the right sound for a piano-only version, so I'm surprised he hasn't played it since, either in concert or on one of those solo live streams. I just wonder what happens to songs like this. 
Knowing that Andrew's written and officially released well over 100 songs, I know he can't play them all regularly, but I'm the type of fan who craves and waits for those surprises and rarities in the set lists, even the ones he never plays. I'm still hopeful. So a little bit on the songwriting. Andrew wrote this song after relaxing for some time on Laguna Beach in California, presumably at the end of the tour. I can assume his time on the beach inspired the primary lyrics about the sea and the ocean. The song's pretty obviously about the time away from his wife while he's out on tour, though. We've spoken before on the show about the subject of the People and Things album in general. Most of it revolves around his relationship with Kelly. So with that in mind, this bonus track's lyrics feel right at home with the songs on the album. Andrew's been public about how difficult it is to be away from his family for weeks at a time, or in the case of this song, 10 days. It's nice that Kelly and Cecilia are able to join him on some tours, or at least show up on certain dates, like they did at the recent Minneapolis show. If you haven't seen it online, there's a picture floating around of Cecilia and Kelly joining Andrew on stage for La La Lie. That's pretty awesome. I wish I would have been able to witness that. Because I've heard of Cecilia coming out on stage. I don't think I've ever heard of Kelly coming out on stage. So, Anyway, getting back to the song, we know it's a relationship song about his girl back home and the difficulty they have when he's gone for weeks at a time. Remember, there's no Cecilia yet when this song was written. To me, the song is pretty unique from other Jack's Mannequin song in the sound of it, though. Instrumentally, it doesn't fit in with the rest of the album, which is maybe why it was left off initially and later added as a bonus track. To me, it sounds more like a classic rock song than most of the material. The intro itself has an older sound to it, like a vintage keyboard, and production on the drums is made to feel kind of echoey and punchy. But there's also a significant bluesy guitar riff in the chorus. Now, I'm not sure what other instruments are there in the verses, but it sounds like there's probably something more going on than just the standard instruments of piano, guitar, bass, and drums. I think a case can also be made that this song was directly influenced by some of Andrew's idols. Like maybe he was trying to replicate that older, more classic rock sound. I hear a little bit of Billy Joel here with the piano that, quote, sounds like a carnival, pun intended. And I can also trace his vocal melodies to some Tom Petty influences there, which... Admittedly, I may be picking up on more because of the Steve Ferrone reference. I do feel as if Andrew was looking for a new sound during this era, and experimenting with different genres. This would, of course, never be more clear than when he entered the next phase of his career with Andrew McMahon in the Wilderness only a few years later. And it's not that he leaned into what I'm calling this classic rock sound, but it was more the experimenting with different co-writers, musicians, and especially genres at the time. Now, the bridge in this one is different from other Andrew McMahon bridges in that it sounds a lot like the rest of the song. It doesn't really vary it up as much, so it actually just feels like an addition to the previous verse. A lot of times he varies up the bridge so it's really defined from the rest of the song, so I guess I was surprised when the bridge was a little hard to find here. But then the melody of the song, it relies a lot on those E sounds, namely the line that ends with C, C, trees, and then the final chorus, free. That has to be the catchiest and most memorable part of the song. It's the hook. It's the part that sticks in my head long after the song is over, and even when I don't want it to, it's still lingering in my brain. So speaking of the C, let's get to the lyrics. I always appreciate Andrew's stories within his songwriting, or the way he tells his stories through these songs. Each of the verses feel like very brief chapters of the story to me. The first chapter is what he finds upon his return from the sea, or the tour. Kelly's reading in the bedroom... His dog Doris is in the yard, probably only a pup at the time. The second verse, though, is a little more vague. Like, who is Paulette? She's in the garden, but I don't think she's a pseudonym for Kelly this time. And while we're on the subject of female names in Andrew's songs, this one's often overlooked. He uses a lot of names in his songs. Annie, Amelia, Amy, Penelope, Katie, Noelle, Diane. Most of these names we can trace back to someone in Andrew's life. But who's Paulette? Well, she's in the garden, so maybe she's a neighbor? That's my best guess. Because he does mention next that it's the first day of fall, so maybe she's doing some cleanup out there. Then he goes on to say he's getting no sleep, and someone, presumably Kelly, asks him to stay until he's strong. Like, maybe he was sick? Or just not feeling up to it? Or maybe their relationship was strained? But the thing is, he has to go out on tour again to make a living regardless of how he feels, even in times where he may not feel up to it. The third verse, though, is my favorite one of the three. I like the imagery of him getting ready to go out on tour again. I can almost imagine Andrew with a backpack, walking up to the dock in the rain. This older, worn man is smoking a pipe, and he shows him onto the ship. And this part is one of the best lyrics in the song, in my opinion. He said, son, you look ready to travel tonight. I think he's right. Not only do I love that lyric, 
but I love the way Andrew sings it as well. And we can't skip out on the chorus here, again, being the catchiest part of the song. Cross the sea with my girl in a house in the trees. I love her, she knows, but sometimes my love goes across the sea. So regardless of where he is in the world, he still loves his wife, he's still thinking about her, but he just can't always be home because this is the job that he chose. As fans all know, this isn't the only time he's covered this subject in a song. The neatest thing about this chorus is the reference back to A House in the Trees. I didn't think back to this song when I first heard and then became obsessed with the actual song called A House in the Trees on Upside Down Flowers years later, but I do think of it every time I hear this song now, and now that I've put some thought into it. I just love the callback. Or maybe it would be foreshadowing? Anyway, I wonder how the two are linked. We all know that Andrew has certain analogies he prefers, and sometimes even particular words he likes to use in lyrics. Maybe this is just another one of those phrases that have stuck with him over the years, and he felt like it deserved its own song eventually. Aside from the lyrics I mentioned, I can't say that I have an exact favorite part of the song, necessarily, but I do really appreciate looking back on those lyrics that I mentioned, knowing what we know now, and getting to connect that House in the Trees lyric to one of my favorite wilderness songs of all time. Though the House in the Trees reference didn't mean anything when 10 Days Gone first came out, it does now that it's become its own song. It means a whole lot more to me. So in the scope of the entire Andrew catalog, 10 Days Gone doesn't rank anywhere near the top for me. I don't mean to sound harsh, but I need to be honest, too. There's so many songs in the catalog I love and I listen to all of the time. This isn't one of them. Hey, they can't all be my favorites. Considering that we never hear it live or even about it anymore, maybe Andrew feels similarly. Again, I'm going to say, I think there were just too many slow acoustic songs toward the end of People and Things, and within that set of bonus tracks. This one just got lost for me. However, it has some great sentimental lyrics, and overall, it's not a bad song. It definitely points to the style of music Andrew would make later. I think this song could easily be an Andrew McMahon in the Wilderness track, probably most likely off of Upside Down Flowers, another ballad-heavy collection of songs. In fact, the closest cousin to this song that I've thought of is Andrew's most recent track, New Year's Song. I wonder if you agree. I want to thank you all again for listening. As always, if you'd like to message me directly, email somethinginthewilderness at gmail.com. Our next episode is sort of a special one to me. We have some returning guests, and our subject song is one of those epic Andrew anthems that has been mentioned all over the emo and pop punk world throughout the years. And after that one, my wife and I head out across the sea ourselves, five days gone on the rock boat. Hopefully I'll see Andrew there if all goes according to plan. And if that happens, well then you get to hear all about it toward the end of November. Our girls will be in our house in the trees, the dog will be in the yard, and we'll have just gotten back and we're traveling hard. Take care.